Today we're talking all about blending modes. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNace, or you can find me here on Flurn five days a week. We make videos five days a week helping you guys get better at Photoshop, photography, and life. Today we're doing blending modes, and uh, blending modes are basically just different ways of combining layers together, and you have a lot of different options when you're using blending modes. I'm going to show you guys some cool tricks on how to flip through them quickly and get the best out of your blending modes, but basically they just change how layers interact with one another. So um, we've got a photo here. We're just going to jump straight into Photoshop today. We've got a photo of Amelia. This we took a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago, and we've got a couple of these images here that are just going to be used as textures. So I'm going to just bring these in. Um, if you want to copy from one image to another, just hold down the shift key and click and drag. And yep, I'm going to go ahead and convert that. Hit OK. And that's going to copy it right to the center. Usually, if you don't hit the shift key, you just do something like this. It won't copy it to the center. So usually you want to copy it to the center just because you'll know where it is. All right, let's go ahead and close those out. So here with our blending modes, this is where your blending modes are. Um, you can see here on normal, all of these are your different blending modes. So there are quite a bit and a lot of people kind of get like um, confused when trying to figure out what blending mode to use. So I'm going to give you a little hint. Um, it, they're pretty easy. They're actually, they're labeled by group and I'm going to show you guys which blending modes I use most. So first you have your darkened group. Everything in here makes, um, makes this image interact with everything underneath it by darkening it. This lightens it. This is your overlay layer. So this mix is dark and light. And then you have difference exclusion. These are just weird ones that you'll probably never use. And then you have your color blending modes down here. So if you want to darken something, try a few of these. Lighten something, try a few of those. So we can see this is, let's just make that layer underneath it. This is on a normal blending mode right now. So it's 100% visible. You can't see through it. Now you can change the opacity, which will allow you to see through it. But then you see it doesn't blend in with the layer underneath it really that well. It's just kind of like, yeah, this is not really there. And the layer under there is not really there. It doesn't look as good as it could. So let's bring the opacity up. Now, most of this layer is light. You can see this is not, there's not a whole lot of dark information on this layer. So if I change this from normal down to lighten, it's not really going to do much because the layer is so light, like the whole layer is going to be visible because it's lightening everything. But if we change this to something like darken, we're going to see it's going to be invisible because it's not really, it's not darker than any of the pixels in my image either. So lighten and darken don't, both don't really do anything. Now, if you were to try something like multiply instead, it takes the dark information that's in the blending mode and it superimposes that over top of the other layers, whether or not it's actually darker than those layers. So you can see moving this around, now we have this really nice texture that, you know, kind of looks like concrete or whatever that you can put onto a background. You can really put this on any image you want to make a great effect. So this is in a multiply blending mode. Now you can try things like color burn, linear burn, but all these are gonna go for the darken. Now you can also try things like screen and lighten. All these are in the lighten blending modes, but you're not really gonna be able to see a lot because it's well, the texture here is lighter than everything else. So here's my quick tip. Um, for the, if you guys are just kind of starting off and you do, you're not really sure what all the blending modes are, you can hold down the command key and then just hold down, sorry, which one is it? Oh, there we go. I lied to you. Hold down the shift key and then hit the plus or minus button. It's pretty much just memory at this point. All right, hold down the shift key and play, hit the plus or minus button. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna flip through your blending mode. So you can see it's going from darken to multiply. And the easiest thing to do, guys, you don't even have to memorize them. Just flip through your blending modes and just see which one you like the best. Um, going through and Yep, I like multiply, I think that looks good. Now you can use opacity as well, like you can lower your opacity here and it's going to be, it's going to add it as a multiply layer but it's just not going to be as visible. So you can definitely do that. Now sometimes what I do is, as I'm going through them, I'm gonna hit shift and kind of go through them and I'll come across a kind of a weird one. All right, something like exclusion or divide. Let's start with exclusion. Well, it's using the light that's on, the light and dark that's on this texture or on this layer. One thing you can do is you can actually invert your texture and then instead of being light, it's going to be dark. So we're going to change this back to normal. I'm going to show you guys this. So hit command I to invert it. And you can see now it's like dark blue with, you know, a little bit lighter flex in it. So it's actually just the invert inverse of the colors. So if you go through now and you go through all your different blending modes, you can see you're getting a completely different effect. So like screen, for instance, command I, you can't see anything, but now 
you get like a completely different effect. It's a different color and it's using the inverse of the texture. So if you are using some of these textures and you're like, yeah, I, I don't, I want kind of like the opposite effect. Like instead of a lightning, you want a darkening effect. You can always invert your texture. So that's something, let's just hit command I again, change that back to normal. Okay. That's something with a lighter color texture. Now we have a darker color texture. I'll show you guys how that works. So here, things like lighten and screen, what is going to happen there is the dark in this texture is going to go away and it's just going to show you guys the light. So lighten again, it's just going to be visible where the area is. It's actually lighting the other area. Screen is going to kind of ignore what's underneath it. And it's going to just say like anything black is going to be invisible. And then the lighter stuff is going to be visible. So now we can see it's lighting and screen really didn't do much with the other layer because the other layer was light. If I try to change this to darken, you can see it's visible almost everywhere. Multiply is just gonna make everything like really dark because this layer is so dark. And then things like soft light, it's gonna be a little bit of both. So you're gonna get mostly dark, but you're gonna get a little bit of light flex in there too. Just like this. So soft light is kind of like a less intense overlay. All right, now onto the layer blending modes that I actually use most of the time. I use normal quite a bit. I use multiply quite a bit. I use screen quite a bit. Overlay and soft light I use as well. And then sometimes I'll use like hue, color, and saturation if I need to be um, if I need to be doing color work instead. But most of the other ones I pretty much don't ever use, uh, almost ever. All right, let's change that back to normal, and you guys can see some other things. So let's say finally, if you guys want to, um, let's just say we want to do a multiply. No, let's go for a screen. We want to do a screen, um, but you can see how it's visible everywhere. So the when you're in a screen blending mode, for instance, the darker parts of the layer don't show up, just the lighter parts do. So if you want to make it less visible, you can either lower your opacity from here, or you could do something like hit command L on your layer, which brings up your levels. And you can just make your layer darker because the darker parts are not showing up with this blending mode. If you make your layer darker, just the lighter parts are going to show up. So you can take this middle slider and just drag it to the right a little bit. And you can see these darker parts are not showing up and you just get those like little white flecks. So very cool effects you can get with blending modes and it's just it, it's super simple and you can just take a photograph of just about anything and use it um, to create textures and all kinds of other really cool things now a couple of people have asked about um this i'm going to shift click the two of those and hit command g and you're going to see my group is now a pass through and i think that kind of trips people up a little bit but what a pass through blending mode does is it's only visible for groups. You can't set a layer to a pass through, by the way. Um, this basically says like it's going to allow each of the layers in there. Like if one's a bl normal blending mode, if one's a screen blending mode, if one's a multiply, it's going to allow them to keep those things. If you change this to something like lighten, it's going to try to take each one of these layers and make it a lighten layer. Or you can just take your group and make it like a, um, a difference. You can see it's going to be kind of some weird stuff there. So it changes basically the effect of all the um, all the layers inside of them, no matter what they do. There we go. You can see if I change that back to normal, like it doesn't change how anything looks because it's it, it changed the group kind of overrides whatever's on the layer. So that's the orb blending modes. All right, let's get them back out of there. We don't need you in the group. Shift click both of those and uh, bring them out. All right, there we go. And Let's see, just for something kind of useful, um, try changing this to something like soft light. And then this I actually did like on um, screen. I thought that was a nice little texture on there too. So just a couple quick little textures on there. And by using blending modes, we can get them to interact with our image in a much better way than just lowering the opacity. We have a lot more control over what we're do it, doing. And it's a lot better. Guys, tell me what your experience is with blending modes. I can't talk. It's Friday. I don't want to talk. What's your experience with blending modes? Um, are there any that you like go to? Are the ones that you use most often? For me, again, it's like darken and multiply, um, lighten and screen, pretty much at the top of each one of those groups are the ones that I use primarily. And what do you guys use your blending modes for? That's it. That's the episode today. I hope that clears up every single question you've ever had and you ever will have about blending modes in Photoshop. Guys, we have a contest. It's on Facebook. We're going to link to that below. Entries and mon or voting ends on Monday. Next week, we're going to be doing critiques as well on Florence. So make sure to stay tuned for that. It's going to be awesome. Guys, can't wait to see you guys this weekend. Have a great weekend. I'll learn you later. Bye, everyone. Have a great weekend. I can't wait to see you. This what am I talking about? Oh. <laughs> I don't even know.